Okay, so today we're going to talk about Unit 1, uh, which is WIMIS. Uh, and obviously our, our goal here today is to learn a little bit about WIMIS and the signs. I'm sure you've done this last year, correct, and the year before probably and, and all that. But we'll just go through them real quick just so you know. Um, but uh, guidelines demonstrate safe practice, handling storage, uh, and identify examples of chemistry-based uh, careers as well. So we'll get to that eventually here. So you guys are going to have some, sorry, guys and gals, you're going to have some notes to uh, fill in here. So go ahead and do that. All right, so WIMIS uh, Workplace Hazardous Materials Information System, of course, uh, is what uh, you need to have there for those notes. Uh, it's an information system that was designed to give workers and employers and students as well more information about the safety and health hazards associated with chemicals that are used. Right? You'll, you'll, we'll give you some examples of what this looks like on a bottle, for example, and, and things like that, which I'm sure you've seen before. Okay? Uh, so they kind of look like that, obviously, in, in a lot of cases. Um, and uh, I'm sure you've seen some of those before. All right. Uh, I don't think we need anything there. Okay. So uh, you don't have to copy anything here. I think you have all this. But um, the label made the uh, made by the employer and contains the following information. So product identifier. What is it? Of course, if it's hydrochloric acid or you know whatever uh, kind of thing. Um, initial supplier identifier. So who made it? All right. Uh, pictograms, pictures uh, that identify the hazard, signal word indicates the severity of the hazard, and it describes the hazard as well in a hazard statement. Uh, precautionary statements, of course, what kind of, uh, what kind of protective gear should you have? Should you have gloves on or a mask or whatever the case might be, All right? Um, workplace labels, labels made at the workplace and attached to containers need to contain the product name, safe handling precautions. Uh, what does SDS stand for? Does anyone know SDS? That's correct. Safety data sheet. All right. Um, that's right here, actually, I think, right? Safety data sheet. So that'll be at the very bottom there, right? But right above pictograms, that's what you're going to fill in there SDS safety data sheet. All right, pictograms. Uh, so in this case here, you're going to have to ha fill, fill in the name of the pictogram here. Well, there's a few things before that, of course. And then we're going to talk about some examples where it's used, okay? Uh, before we get to that, uh, this is important. Make sure you know this. The hazards associated with the chemicals that can be identified as either a physical hazard or a health hazard. So make sure you know that. Physical hazard or a health hazard. Most of, the, uh, most of the classes of hazards are identified with a pictogram. A pictogram is an image that helps us identify the hazard, uh, and all of the pictograms can be found below. So, uh, for example, we've probably seen something like that before. So here we go. Here's all your hazards. Don't uh, copy this down because we have another sheet. I'll go through each one with you. But that's kind of some of the things that you may have seen before, right? Uh, exploding bomb, all the guys like that one. Hey? Most of the girls, too, let's be honest. Hey? Um, flame. Uh, and all this other, all these other ones. So health hazards, for example, biohazardous, you know, would be an example of a health hazard, right? Uh, things like that, okay? Health hazard also causes serious health effects. All right, so the first one is flammable. So you're going to write that down in the little sp space there. And then you're going to write down the examples that they give here. So for, obviously, for example, um, gasoline, okay, ethanol or alcohol, all right? Our first quiz is probably going to be something on this, obviously, you know, a little bit of matching or something like that, probably just start you off nice and easy so we all get, uh, you know, 60% on the first quiz. We're all feeling successful. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, we're all feeling successful, you know, kind of thing. But we'll throw some of this stuff in there kind of thing just to, you know, match it up kind of thing. All right. What, what's today? Wednesday? Friday's a good day for a quiz, isn't it? Maybe. We'll see. Let's, we'll think. I'll think about it. I'll let you know. It's not too early. And usually quizzes, by the way, I just, I don't think I need to record this part, but. <laughs> uh, so flammable. For uh, fire hazards and flammable materials, of course, it includes gasoline, ethanol is a type of alcohol, okay? um, things like that. 
they put ethanol in your gasoline, of course, yes, a little certain blend of it uh, that's uh, made from corn or can be distilled from corn. All right, uh, flame over circle, which is oxidizing. For oxidizing material, they really readily give off oxygen or a substance that can increase the chance of a fire. Okay, examples include bromine, nitrates, chlorates, nitric acid. So these substances give off oxygen, um, and, and they become uh, they can enhance basically. Uh, the intensity of a fire, for example. We know that, I, I think we know, uh, maybe we don't, I don't know, but uh, we need oxygen in order to burn things, yes? Okay, so whether it's your uh, car engine or whatever, it takes in fresh air through the air filter and, and we need that combustion, we need that oxygen to burn things. Uh, we're gonna look at combustion reactions like less than 10-ish or so roughly. Uh, so we're gonna talk about those again. I think you've done those before probably, yes, I think. Uh, chemical equations kind of thing with oxygen or something. And if you haven't, we'll do them. It's not a big deal. Um, but we need oxygen in order to burn things. These are substances that give off oxygen. Okay, so they enhance. Uh, you know, if something's burning, it's going to give off oxygen and increase that, and increase the fire. Okay, uh, and the intensity, perhaps the length of it, etc. Uh, gas cylinder. All right. Gas cylinder is for gases under pressure. So, for example, a, a tank of propane gas would be uh, a, a good example of that. All right, next, um, corrosion. So, for corrosive damage to metals as well as skin eyes, they attack and chemi chemically destroy. Of course, most of the time when you see this, you think what? I, I was probably up here, but somebody talked to me. Yeah, acids, right? Hydrochloric acid, sulfuric acid, things like that. Bases are also very uh, corrosive, all right? We'll talk about that as well. Um, we'll. Probably talk about that a little bit right now, actually, but once you're done those. So, um, again, uh, acids, bases are, are pretty good examples of, of corrosion uh, or corrosive materials. Um, bases are very dangerous as well, right? Uh, and hopefully you know that. But things like, uh, well, give me, does anyone have an example of, uh, I know there's one there, sodium hydroxide, that probably doesn't mean a lot to you, but does anyone know some base? What do we usually use bases for? Uh, let's pick somebody else, somebody over here. Uh, sh uh, I know your last name. Okay, go ahead. Drano, absolutely. Uh, what else? Anything else? I'll give you a hint. Windows. Yep. Window cleaner, right? Windex. Uh, you know that strong smell, you like Windex kind of thing? Uh, that's ammonia, right? Uh, ammonia is a base, NH3, nitrogen trihydride would be another name for that. Um, and we use that. Do you know why we use that stuff? Why do we use bases to clean? Yep. It does. Uh, so does acids, though. Like acids will corrode things as well. We use bases because they attack living organisms. Okay. So if you're, you know, cleaning the toilet or, you know, someday you're going to move out on your own and you're going to go to university and, and uh, things like that, you're going to want to use, you know, those cleaning things to basically, you know, disinfect your, kind of kill off living, anything that's living, right? Um, and clean your tub or shower or whatever kind of thing. Okay, that's what we use them for. Yep. They, um, they, they don't attack living organisms. So... They, I mean, they will attack your skin, they will chemically burn, but they don't really uh, act in the same way as bases do. Okay. All right, next, environment. So uh, environment may cause damage to aquatic environment, uh, including PFCs, which are, which are perfluorinated car compounds. Um, and again, PFCs, uh, we don't, we try not to use them anymore, of course. Uh, because uh, they can cause damage to aquatic environment or environment, uh, and they also sometimes cause cancers. Okay? So we used to use them, but we have since tried to ban them. Okay. So yeah, there's a few other ones here coming up as well, but um, exploding bomb, everyone loves this one. Okay? Uh, for explosions or reactivity hazards, an example would be ammonium perchlorate, 
or nitroglycerin, which are both very unstable. All right, all right, moving on here. Um, exploding bomb, skull and crossbones. Skull and crossbones can cause death or toxicity with short exposure to small amounts. Uh, things like carbon monoxide, sodium cyanide. Right? And we'll just briefly talk about the signs of carbon monoxide, just so you know. You don't probably have to write that down, but probably important to know for your houses. It's going to get cold out eventually here. So carbon monoxide is probably uh, obviously one of the biggest ones. Um, of course, uh, you know, things, uh, signs of carbon monoxide poisoning are headaches, nausea, dizziness, breathlessness, you eventually collapse, loss of co consciousness. So it can be kind of dangerous, obviously. Uh, it can occur from death as well. Um, usually carbon monoxide, uh, hopefully you have carbon monoxide detectors in your house, yes, on maybe uh, on probably multiple levels, hopefully, if you got different levels. Um, because you never know how it gets passed in, in a lot of cases. Um, we actually had this hat. Well, I don't know if I need to record this part. But, um, um, next, so health hazards. Uh, may cause or be suspected of causing serious health effects. So we know that now, of course, asbestos uh, can cause cancer. So we don't use asbestos anymore. So that's an example of a health hazard. Okay, Something that's going to cause you... Um, serious, some, some serious health effects. All right. Um, oh, exclamation mark. Uh, may cause less serious health effects or damage to the ozone layer uh, as part of the atmosphere. Uh, we'll talk about the ozone layer coming up uh, in, in further units here. We'll talk a little bit about, well, actually not so much this unit, but uh, methylene chloride uh, can cause damage to organs and skin and irritation. So less serious health effects, but again, uh, like for example, this one is irritating to eyes, skin, and respiratory tract. Uh, it's toxic, but maybe, you know, may not cause uh, severe, severe things, but it's not enjoyable. And biohazardous infectious materials. If you play video games, you've probably seen this at some point, right? Or uh, in some TV shows or movies or something like that. Uh, for organisms or toxins that could cause diseases in people or animals, uh, use medical equipment like needle. Use medical equipment like needles, for example. 